This story is based off a single photo negative that I found in the bottom of a box while I was organizing old photographs in the basement of the CBC building on Riverside. When I saw the negative, I was very intrigued, so I took it to a photo lab and I got it developed, and here's the result. As you can see, it's a man hanging off the side of the CBC tower. Now, I showed this photo to some of my co-workers at the CBC, and they knew who he was. Well, that's Yorkie, they said. Well, I posted the photo on Facebook, and I was very interested in the responses that I got. Turns out that a lot of people remember Yorkie. He was a very colorful Windsor character who wandered around downtown the West End during the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, and he had climbed the CBC CKLW tower several times in those decades, the 50s, 60s, and 70s. One of the people who recognized Yorkie was Mark Broad. Through conversation with Mark, I learned that he knew my paternal grandparents. My grandma Janet was good friends with Isabel Broad, who was Mark's mom. The two grew up together in Windsor in the 1920s and 1930s. The Broad family lived on Salter Street in the shadow of the CKLW Tower, and Mark Broad saw Yorkie climb that tower on several occasions when he was growing up in the 1950s. And Mark Broad joins me now on the telephone. Hello, Mark. Hi, Mike. I had come across a photo in my grandma's album, and I found a couple pictures of, of your mom and your dad. And the only reason I identified them was because they were standing on Salter right behind the CBC, and I recognized that spot. Oh, and that's how you... (laughs) Okay, wow. And so my dad had told me that he knew a gentleman, your father, who lived on Salter, and he lived there at the time, and he was in his 90s at the time. Yeah, he lived there until 93. What was your father's first name? Bernard. Bernard. And in that photo I have, the one of your parents in front of that house, he's in a Navy uniform, but it's not the Canada Navy. Oh, no. He joined the U.S. Navy. And how did that come about? Was he an American? He was. Okay. Right. He, my dad was born in the U.S. and moved to Canada. So That's you guys lived point. in that house on Salter for your entire childhood? Yes. In fact, my grandmother was born there in 1896. In that house? In the house, in the kitchen, she used to tell us, because we lived there with my grandmother and grandfather. That house is very old. So you're growing up there right in, kind of in the shadow of CKLW. Exactly. Any interesting stories come out of that? Well, mostly Yorkie. It's all about Yorkie. And I think that's how I kind of met him is when he climbed the tower maybe the first time. But I've seen him climb it several times. <laughs> and that's that's actually why, why I called you. That's what I wanted to hear about because I'm fascinated by that story. When I was working at the CBC, one of the things they had me do was clear out boxes of photographs in the basement. But one of the last photos I found, it was a negative. And I picked it up and I held it to the light and it was a man on the pole. And I had never seen that before and I had no idea, but I asked some people who worked there and they said, yeah, that's Yorkie. And then I see the name pop up on social media every once in a while and people are talking about the story and now I've found a few pictures of him on the tower. But you actually saw it, so paint the scene for us. Well, all of a sudden it'd be police cars and people, you know, going towards CKLW. You'd see some traffic going there, and he'd be up, and he'd, he'd be funny, right? He'd, he'd climb up. One time he climbed up almost close to the top. The yeah. police wouldn't go up. they just stand there and wait for him to come down, and he'd yell and do all kinds of things. But he was a very funny guy. He was a great guy. I'll tell you a couple stories about him. Yeah. We'd see him in the streets. He'd be coming down, hey, Yorkie, how's it going? And uh, he'd ask us for some money, and we'd have a, a nickel or a dime or whatever. And this is back in the 50s. But we'd always ask him, do Popeye. Now, he would do impersonations, and the one he'd like to do was the shadow. We didn't know who the shadow was. Apparently, he was some creepy guy in the 1940s, and he'd do the shadow impression. and It was great, but we didn't know who he was. But he did Popeye. <laughs> it was crazy. He'd blow his cheeks out like a dizzy Gillespie. He'd blow him out like that, like, or like a bullfrog. He'd pull his lower lip up to his nose, and then he'd bulge his eyes out. <laughs> and he was like, Papa, oh my God. We, we'd go nuts. We, <laughs> here, here's another time. <laughs> he was funny, I, and he would entertain us like that, yeah. No, that's really funny. And his name his name was actually Norman, but he, he had the nickname Yorkie. And any idea where the nickname came from? No idea. I, until now, I didn't know his name was Norman. Okay. He was just Yorkie to everybody. So he lived around there, or was he just, just coming through that way? It seemed like he frequented from maybe Olette to maybe the, the Coronation Tavern. Yeah, and he'd go back and forth in there, and we'd see him quite often. He'd hang around the railway track. He was a gentleman, even to us children. We all liked him, and he liked us. He picked 
a lot of people's flowers, and then he would come around and sell them, present them to the lady next door. You know, that's his little gift to them. And everybody knew what he was doing, but he was Yorkie, so everybody would help him out. He would be up in the tower for a little while, and then would the police talk him down, or would he just come down on his own? Kind of come down on his own. His goal was to go to jail, get a couple of meals and a, and a bed. And so he'd go up. He liked the theatrics, and everybody's, some people are cheering him, the police, what are we going to do? And he loved all that, and he'd be yelling, and then he'd come down by himself. I think one time, maybe the first time, one policeman went up a little ways, and he realized it was useless. He, he might have only gone up 20 feet or 30 feet. And Yorkie, I don't know, he must have been a strong guy. He's up there and waving flowers around. And you say that uh, Yorkie climbed the tower more than once. So how many times would you say that he did climb it? Oh, I, I'd say five or six. I've talked to people that think it was only once, but no, it was more than once, way more. No, you had a really good vantage point there to see all that stuff happen. There's a story in a police book that my dad had about the police in Windsor, and they mentioned the relationship that Yorkie had with the a sitting judge in Windsor at the time, and that Yorkie was always getting locked up, but the judge liked him, and the judge uh, took it easy on him. The judges treated him pretty good. The police were, uh, they were okay with him. It was Yorkie. They're, they're not going to do anything bad. He was like a little bit of a thorn in their side because he'd climb up a tower and make fun of them. And he must have been in his 50s or more. Yeah. And he was a little man, probably was five foot five. Oh, okay. My guess, he could climb things at... <laughs> He was brave, no fear at all. How, how big of a crowd would you say? How many people would show up to watch him up there? Maybe 40 or 50, like neighborhood people. And then there would be a couple fire trucks and a couple squad cars. Exactly. And then he'd come down and everybody would watch him get dragged off to the lockup. Yeah, and, and they'd take him away and he'd be swearing, but the cops would be fine, walking him to the cop car. Do you remember hearing the story about how he held some kind of record for most arrests in the city of Windsor? It could be true because he tried, right? Right. Most people try not to because he wanted some place to stay and, and, a, and a meal. Well, thank you again for, for sharing the story with us. You're very welcome.